idea that we hadn't managed to get an agreement and all the rest of it. And the following morning, I came back on the Friday night, the following morning I went out in my constituency to knock doors um, on this crucial weekend of negotiations. And I went to one door, and the man, and my list said the man should be a supporter, so I was expecting a, a warm welcome when he opened the door. And he opens the door, and before I could say a word, he said to me, what are you doing here? I didn't think it was the kind of welcoming embrace that I expected from one of my supporters. And I said, well, I'm here to speak to you about the election. He says, you've got no business being here. You've got far too many important things to be dealing with than coming to my doorstep on a Saturday morning when you've got all this fiscal framework stuff to, to discuss and to occupy your mind. And I said to him, the day I'm not on your doorstep on a Saturday morning is the day I have become like my political opponents. Because what my politics are about, what my politics are about, are about staying close to the communities of Scotland and understanding what our people want. What are their aspirations? What are their hopes? And doing everything I possibly can do to deliver them. So when I come to Stranraer, when I'm involved in discussions over a prolonged period of time with representatives of this area about the challenges that this community faces, whether it's about the waterfront at Stranraer, or the challenge of digital connectivity in the rural parts of this community, or whether it's about the transport certainties that people are looking for about the rail link, or about the improvements to the A75 or the A77 that are on people's minds, I listen to those concerns and those aspirations and I do what I can as a minister to try to address them, which is why I've set out today the government's commitment, if we are returned on the 5th of May, to deliver 100% superfast broadband connectivity to everybody in South West Scotland. It's why we committed to taking forward further improvements on the A77 and the A75 and it's why I've committed the resources to unlock the difficult issues around the development of the Stranraer waterfront to give this community the chance to recover from the changes in the ferry arrangements which you have come to deal with. We recognise the aspirations of communities and we are here to try to address them as the National Party of Scotland acting for every single part of the community of Scotland. <coughs> All of that can only happen if this constituency is successfully won by the Scottish National Party and we are able to form a majority government in the Scottish Parliament on the 5th of May. So what I would say to you tonight is please do everything you possibly can do to secure Ealing's election here in Galloway in Western Greece so that we can get on with implementing these commitments and delivering for the people of this community. That is what this election is about. When I look around, I, I did a, 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 a media interview a few months ago, and I was asked um, what I thought was the, the, the contribution I had made as a consequence of being a minister over the last nine years. And the newspaper reporter said that rather immodestly, um, I said that I thought I had contributed to making Scotland a more self-confident country. And that's what I feel, I, honestly, that's my honest answer to the question. That's what I feel I've done. I, I feel Scotland is a much more self-confident country today than she has ever been in, my, in all of my life that I've spent in this country. It is wonderful to see what is happening to Scotland today. From the bold leadership of Alex Salmond, who said we're not going to call ourselves a, a wee executive, we're going to call ourselves a government and we're going to govern for the people of Scotland. When he told me on the, when the Ferguson shipyard went down, he told me, go away and get that yard in different ownership and get it back on its feet, and we've got it back on its feet. Building ships on the Clyde, which people told us you couldn't do any longer. in taking us into a referendum in which we made the self-confident argument that this country can stand on the road to feet and be an equal nation in the world. That boldness has served us well and made us a more self-confident country. 
And we're now fortunate enough to have the inspiring, reforming, talented leadership of Nicola Sturgeon, who sets out just as big challenges as Alex Salmon set out. Who said to Fergus Ewing, we've got to do something to fix and save the Scottish steel industry. And you saw today the Scottish Government's intervention. While Westminster's abroad on holiday, we were fixing the steel industry here in Scotland. UK ministers were working out where their offshore financial interests could be handled. We were picking up the pieces for the disabled people of our country who had their benefits slashed by the UK government. That's the contrast of the political traditions in which we operate. So on the 5th of May, it's up to all of us to make sure we form a majority government in Scotland. That we get alien elected here, that we get a bumper vote on the regional list here in the south of Scotland, that we secure Nicola Sturgeon's election as the First Minister, and we open up the opportunity of something I never thought in my life I would ever live to see, the election for a third time of an SNP government. Let's get on with it. We've got a great record. Today's been a really special day, not only in terms of backing a fantastic candidate, and I'll say a few nice words about in a second, but for the what I consider to be a seminal, enormous announcement that John has made for the benefit of this town. Everybody that knows me knows I'm a Stranraer boy, know that I care very deeply about this place, as I do the entire constituency. But Stranraer probably needs more help than most towns along the A75. And it's humbling, gratifying, and enormously pleasing that the Scottish Government has listened, but not only listened, but kept to the word to come here and give this entire project a nudge forward. So, once again, from everybody here, from everybody in this town, thank you very much. So we have everybody here from all six branches, but it's been an enormous privilege for me to be your candidate. And can I only promise you that not if, but when. <laughs> so when we win this seat on May the 5th, and that's only, as uh, John Swinney has uh, pointed out to us, it's only uh, about three weeks away, then I will, as I've always said to you, I will always work tirelessly on your behalf to make sure that we are delivering the policies that you want to see in this constituency and across the rest of Scotland. But can I also uh, ask you to again to give a very big warm welcome uh, to John Swinney, our Deputy Election campaign because obviously, I mean, John has uh, you know, you've travelled 
a fair distance to be here with us all tonight and to be part of tonight's events. And I uh, certainly I really appreciate that because you know everyone knows you know, John's uh, reputation as an outstanding politician and he certainly has been a role model for so many of us. And on a personal note, you know, John has been an absolutely just great support for me, and especially as I was taking through the land reform bill uh, through the parliament, and also he's just been a wonderful mentor for me when I've been trying to uh, grapple as a new minister with so many, uh, as John says, many complex and sensitive issues that mean so much to so many people across the whole of Scotland. But I certainly wouldn't have been able to have done that without the support and the mentoring that I've had from John Spinner. So thank you.